Hello, Augies Worldwide. I come to you from Ridgeway, Colorado, without my teeth, unfortunately. Um, had a tooth out a week ago, and uh, I hope I can make myself understood. Uh, the question today comes from Jim Campbell. Okay, he doesn't uh, give a call sign. He says, hey Dave, I have about a 75 foot distance from the ground rod at my shack entrance to the utility ground. My question is, do I need to drive additional ground rods between these two ground rods or can I just have the number six bare copper bonding wire connecting the two? That's an interesting question. But before we go into it, I'd like to pay a special thanks to John Peck. John is my newest patron, and you too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and picking a way that works for you. Now, I've changed how we do things on uh, Patreon. Uh, you'll pick a level, and then once a month we are going to run a list of all the patrons by level. Uh, down there we also have uh, the people who've been providing tips and people who provide recurring tips, and we're going to say a thank you to those people too. So, let's take a look at this question. It's an interesting one. If your number six bonding wire is running underground, it's sort of acting like a ground wire just as it is. So I would say that amateur radio current best practice is that's fine. However, there has been a move afoot in amateur radio to bring grounding and bonding more in line with the parts of the National Electric Code that refer to radio installations. Now you may not think of your house as a radio installation and I don't think that the electric code had that in mind either. But yes you can, if you want, put ground rods about the twice the length of a ground rod, about every 16 feet. You can drive a ground rod and bond it to the uh, number six wire. There's little thermal kits that you can put around it and light fire to and it will get hot enough that it will melt some copper and do a weld between those. Or if you are an expert welder, you can uh, do that yourself, TIG welding or something like that. And then that way you've got a really good ground uh, in there. Now, um, you also, if you have an antenna like a vertical and you've got a radial field out there, from the center of that radial field you can run a number, another number six copper wire over to connect to your station ground, similarly uh, buried and uh, if you want to put ground rods in between that's fine. I don't, I haven't yet. I've got a couple things I need to do to update my ground system and, and we'll do that. My vertical is grounded but it's not bonded to the station ground, uh, I need to fix that. And my connection over to the utility ground is only a number eight bare copper wire needs to be number six. So I've got some work due to bring it up. Now, the term best practices is a little interesting. It means what successful people do, okay? Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that anything's been proven or there have been studies or one is theoretically better than the other and so on. Best practice is what your successful hams do. Now, successful hams, and there are a lot of them, and you're really one of them too, um, usually ground a little less efficiently than the kind that is called for there. So I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, you can buy more ground rods and pound them uh, as much as you want. Uh, it will give you, each additional ground rod only gives you incrementally additional uh, grounding, but uh, it is something that you can put in and it will be more effective in a lightning scenario. Okay, now again, uh, the caveat. Uh, in the event of a direct strike, all bets are off. So if you want to ground for a, 
a lightning strike, take a look at the Motorola handbook that's mentioned in Ask Dave number eight and look at how they do small communications facilities on mountaintops. And if you can do that, uh, you may actually be uh, pretty much immune to a lightning strike. If you live in lightning prone areas during the lightning season, simply disconnect your equipment entirely uh, from the system and uh, you know set it across the room uh, and only connect it when you're going to use it. Uh, during the rest of the year, just make sure that uh, everything is turned off. I have a switch here for my antenna and there's a center position that grounds all of them, grounds all the antennas. There's also a lightning arrestor in there too. So lots of things that you can do to help protect your station. A good ground not only helps protect it from electrical transients, but also helps reduce uh, noise on the lines. Okay, so that's a great help. So there you have it. I hope that helps answer your question. Uh, for those who have watched this far, you may be very interested in the channel. Please uh, click uh, subscribe and also uh, click the bell so you'll be notified of new videos. And uh, you can also check out decastlercom slash support for additional ways that you can help support this channel. And until we next meet, 73.